This is a 20 inch diameter, 10 inch deep mini kick, which I started over a year ago. I was going to use it as the gigging setup for the Nine Inch Nails tribute band, but under the current world circumstances, no one's gigging anyway, so we won't be working on that today again. Over the weekend, I worked on some fixtures for the drum shop. That's a storage rack for his conveyor belt rollers that go to his shell cutting jig. Several brackets for a decorative shelf we're putting in the office, and another batch of drum hangers. If you could just load those up in the truck, I'll meet you over there. And if you find the lens cap to the camera, bring that too. We are back. Check out all those drums up in the mezzanine. If anyone wants to buy a rope drum or a rando drum set, Bill needs to eat. It's wasting away. All right, I brought the cart of goodies in here. I'm going to drill the holes for all the PVC pipe for the drum holders. Get this bracket on the wall and see about hanging that shelf. So Bill got the clamps off the bass drum, cleaned her up, oiled it. He's working on a template for the leather ears. Get them cut out, laced up. He's got some heads to tuck. These hoops need to be sanded, polyed, and apparently he's making a birdhouse. Got there, buddy. I got some. I got some sheep intestines. That's what I got. Mm. Or possibly goat, but definitely not cat. I don't know why they call it cat gut. It's not made of cat. Made of goat or sheep. Natural gut. Natural gut. I got a natural gut. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I got the roller jig components mounted up on the wall. Just gonna put one of those drum hangers here. Got several. Got about seven of them to spread around the shop. Put them anywhere we can. Ryan up today, find them. What did you do with that? In my pocket. Well, I ain't gonna reach in that point. I've never actually seen one of these tucked. I'm not good at this, um, especially with one this small. Like this is. So that's legit cowhide, right? Yeah, this is cowhide. It's not synthetic. Right. So you soak it. Yeah. And then you put the flesh hoop in there, and you're kind of wrapping around and underneath. Yeah, you got to go around and then like back up under itself. So it, the... it basically clamps itself as it dries. I think I might have cut this piece too large though. But how do you get it up under there? That's what that little pry push yeah, tool is? It, yeah. Because like the tannins and the hide will like basically, it's like glue, it's like hide glue, you know? Right. It glues itself to itself. Self adheres? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what it does. But you gotta get it all up under there, which is difficult. But in particular, for me at least, these small diameter heads, it's like such a pain in the ass to get 
you know, to get it tucked up under there. When um, with a larger diameter, where you kind of have more room to work. Right. I was always working on a tight. It curve. looks like the tighter the curve is equating to more wrinkles and bunching up. Yeah, and that's the thing that like I, I have a really hard time figuring out how to resolve. And part of that is because I never know quite what diameter to start with. Because even if I measure and measure like, you know, how wide is the flush hoop and, and how far around is it gonna have to wrap and stuff like that, I can never quite predict like what's gonna be the right uh, diameter to start with. That's why you gotta ask Steel. He probably goes out in the wild wrestles the kangaroo and then it puts itself on a flesh hoop. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? For a while he was doing um, uh, master classes on, on how to do this. Like he went to Singapore for a while. So I gotta see if I can FaceTime him and be like, can you just teach me how to do this, man? A big wrinkle in here. I have a hard time getting that out. I got four of these bracket savages up. I could not hit a stud next to the door. So the jack and the king must be behind that molding. Or they just didn't use a jack and a king. So I went through the molding. Two studs out this way. Gonna hit two studs out this way. I look like a monkey humping a football up there trying to do it. So we ain't filming that. And speaking of monkeys humping a football, <laughs> that's Bill's design for the leather ears. So uh, we'll have to ask him about that. It's almost like I know what I'm doing. I don't. But it looks like I do. Let's load it up with drums. Had a pretty good shop day. Um, sanded a bunch of hoops for the Scatterwall Rangers Junior Fife and Drum Corps. Um, these are a bunch of snare hoops going to them. There's some bass hoops too that are over on the finishing table. Uh, Bales hung some more stuff, some hangers for uh, for hoops and things. This uh, grinder finally got up on the wall. Um, Tucked some calfskin, calfskin heads uh, that are going to go out soon to a uh, client. We got more uh, shell and hoop hangers up. Oh, no, that's not a base hoops I worked on over there. And then moving into the office side, we got uh, this dope ass shelf that Bale's made with uh, all these restoration projects that I haven't gotten around to yet. I think he just put them up here so that I'd get off my ass and do the work. Jokes on him though, because they look cool, so I want to leave them. Also made a template for 19th century style ears, uh, as goofy looking as that is. This laser cut acrylic so that they can be cut out of leather, which when they're done, they look every bit as goofy as you'd expect. But believe it or not, this was extremely popular on military drums during the Civil War, so don't blame me, blame the US military for that design right there. Drum nuts. <laughs> drum nuts. Yeah, it's like truck nuts before you're drunk. <laughs>